If you are a DevOps engineer, you might have heard about a very popular term, GitOps. But what the fuck is GitOps? So in this video, I will be explaining you what GitOps is, how we use it in real world applications, what are benefits of using GitOps, and also a hands-on project where we deploy a simple application on Kubernetes using a very popular GitOps tool, Argo CD. This is going to be the only video you need to understand GitOps from scratch. So watch this video till the end. Let's start. Hey everyone and welcome to CloudChamp. Let's start with understanding what is GitOps before we move ahead with different benefits and the practical example of deploying an application using GitOps technology. What is GitOps? So GitOps, as the name suggests, combines of Git and Ops, which is a DevOps practice that uses Git repositories as a single source of truth. As a DevOps engineer, you might already be familiar with Git, which is a version control tool that lets you store your code on different repositories like GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket. So GitOps is a DevOps practice where you have Git as a single source of truth to deploy your applications, to manage infrastructure, or also to configure them. Let's try to understand this with real world examples and see how GitOps can be used with popular DevOps tools like Kubernetes, Ansible, or Terraform. To make this easier, let's understand what happens when we don't use GitOps, starting with Kubernetes. So in Kubernetes, we have to write down our manifest file to create different components like services, deployments, pods, nodes, config map, and ultimately deploy your application. Similarly, in Terraform, you have to write down your scripts that will create resources in different cloud providers. And in Ansible, we have to write down playbooks that can configure servers. But after you create manifest files, you have to manually run kubectl create or apply to have that component in your cluster. Similarly, in Terraform, you need to run Terraform apply command to create resources in the cloud. And in Ansible, you need to run Ansible playbook command to configure servers and run the playbook on different servers. And GitOps automate exactly this process. Now, deploying an application manually or creating infrastructure or configuring servers manually can cause a lot of issues like increased risk, slower deployment time, uh, difficulty in rollback, and a lot more. Instead of doing this manually, you can use GitOps tools like Argo CD and Flux CD, which uses your Git repository as single source of truth. So how this actually works is, you will connect your Git repository with GitOps tool and it will constantly check your repository if you have made any changes. So let's say you change the image in the deployment manifest. You don't have to manually run kubectl apply. The GitOps tool will automatically detect any changes you made and synchronizes your application or infrastructure to match the desired state that you have defined in your Git repository. This is why definition says that GitOps uses Git as a single source of truth because anything that you have mentioned in your Git repository will be shown in your application and if there is any issue, it can roll back as well. Now let's look at different advantages you can get when using GitOps. The first benefit of GitOps is obviously automation. With GitOps, you can automate the deployment and management of infrastructure, reducing the need of any manual intervention and minimizing human errors. Second benefit is version control. With Git as a foundation in GitOps, you have full version control and you can easily track any changes or rollback if any issue arises. Next is consistency. When you use GitOps with your different environments like staging, production and development, all of them will have same configuration settings that you have defined in your Git repositories, which will avoid any configuration issues that might occur if you do it manually. Another benefit of using GitOps could be security. So you can control access to your Git repositories, providing robust security and only allowing authorized users to make changes to your applications or to your infrastructure. Last benefit could be efficiency or faster time to deployments. When using GitOps, you don't have to manually run the commands, reducing the time that it takes to deploy your changes or your updates. It's time for hands-on project. At this point, I am hoping you understood what is GitOps along with different benefits of it. If you did understand it, let me know in the comment section that this video has helped you understand GitOps. Let's go with practicing GitOps in action using Argo CD and deploying a game on Kubernetes. All right, so I'm here on my computer screen and let's start with deploying a Tetris game on Elastic Kubernetes service using Argo CD. So we will go ahead and create a cluster. To create a cluster, you can go to Elastic Kubernetes service in Amazon cloud and then click on create for this. Let's name this cluster as GitOps and I'm going to choose the version, which is the latest one. This is the role for the cluster and click on next option here for VPC. I'm going to choose the default VPC. You can choose any one and I'll avoid using my private subnets. So let's choose the public one. 
okay for security group I'm going to use my uh, security group which is this one you can choose any and let's go ahead with creating next no need to enable logging add-ons I'm going to keep the default ones let's click on next and this is going to create our kubernetes cluster kubernetes cluster usually takes 10 to 15 minutes to create so we have to wait for it to be creating so that we can go ahead and add our nodes till the time this is going to be created let me show you this tetris game docker image is created on my docker hub which we will be using in our manifest file we will be using this image on docker hub to deploy our tetris game i have the manifest file ready in my vs code and don't worry i'll be sharing this with you on github the link is going to be in the description so we have a deployment file which is using tetris uh, as an image and we want this to be deployed through argo cd automatically using GitOps. along with this deployment to expose it i have a service file and this two manifest file are inside a folder named as manifest we will have to create a github repository uh, similar to what i have here so i have a github repository created you can also go ahead and fork this repository or clone the code to use the same so in this manifest folder, I have two manifest, one for deployment, one for service. Deployment is using the uh, first version of Tetris and we will then deploy the second version of Tetris. We want the Argo CD to automatically deploy it using GitOps. So I will wait for this cluster to come up in active state, then go ahead, add the node groups and install Argo CD on it. I'll pause the video now and come back when it's ready. Okay, now the cluster is in active state. Let's go ahead and add a node group. So I'm going to go in compute section here and click on add node group. We can name this node groups as anything. Let's name it nodes. And for the IAM rule, I'm choosing the Amazon EKS node rule. Click on next option here. And for the instance type, we will have to choose something in the medium because Argo CD requires a server with two CPU and four GB of RAM. And that you can get only in medium if you choose to go with micro, which is the free tier application. You cannot install Argo in it. So we will go with the medium, which has two vCPUs and 4 GB of RAM which is required for Argo CD installation. So let's add that and click on next. So we have two nodes of T2, uh, T3 medium. We will select the subnets, click on next option here and then create this node group. Node group also takes some time. So till the time node group is going to be created. So let's go ahead and connect our cluster with the terminal. Uh, for this you need to have kubectl installed and if you don't have it installed you can go to the official documentation or you can check my previous videos which has the commands to install kubectl. So once you have your kubectl and AWS CLI installed, you need to connect your cluster with the terminal and I can do that by running this command which is AWS EKS update cube config dash dash name cluster name and the region. Let's press enter and this will give you an output saying add a new context and you can now run kubectl get pods to get the pods in your cluster. We will see no resources found because we don't have anything created yet. Let's go ahead and install Argo CD. For installation, I am going to use this documentation and the link for this will be in the description so you can go ahead and copy this commands which will create namespace argo cd and install argo cd with the manifest files so copy and paste it here so as you can see uh, it has created namespace and also creating all the other stuff which means argo cd is installed you can optionally go ahead and install the argo cd cli as well to manage your applications on argo cd through cli but i'm not going to do that let's move ahead with exposing the argo cd and this is the command which will create a load balancer and next we can run this command to put the dns of the load balancer in the argo cd server variable and it has to take around two to three minutes because load balancer takes time so i'm going to copy this after some time i can run this command when the load balancer is ready just to show you let's come back to our ec2 dashboard and go to load balancer to see if any load balancer is in creating state or not as you can see there's a load balancer created right now which is uh, 152 or 153 so after Waiting for two minutes, you can run the next command, which is to put the load balancer DNS in this particular variable. So I'm going to run it and press enter. So it's giving me an error because I don't have JQ, which I can install by running this command. Okay, so JQ is installed and I'm going to run the same command again, which is to store the load balancer's DNS in the Argo CD server. Once I do this, you can confirm by running echo dollar Argo CD server and you have the load balancer DNS here which we, which means it works. Now let's go to the next command uh, which is to put the password in this particular variable which is argo underscore pwd. So I'm going to copy the same thing and paste it in my terminal. This will go ahead and save uh, my password and you can confirm by running echo argo underscore pwd. 
So this is the password we will be using to login and to login you need to copy your load balancers DNS and paste it in a new tab. Once you paste it, you should be able to see this page which says connection is not private. Click on advanced section and proceed to this link which will open up Argo CD UI. This is what it looks like. We need to log in and for the login, username is always admin. Password is the same which you have stored in your Argo underscore PWD. So I'm going to copy this password and paste it in the password section here. This should log you in inside your Argo CD and here you go we are logged in this is how the ui looks if you want to manage anything through argo cd may you need to create an application but before i do that i need to connect my github repository so that argo cd should, should use GitOps to manage any change we are going to connect our repo using https so i'm going to say connect repo with https and project name could be anything let's choose default the url is what you can get from your repository i'm going to go to my repository uh, you can choose to fork this or use the use my as well because this is public so i'm going to copy and paste this in my argo cd configuration this is optional because this is a public one if it was private you need to put the username and password so this is all you need and click on connect once it is connected it should show successful which means you have successfully connected your repo and now argo cd is going to fetch or sync from this particular repo so let's go and create an application so that argo cd can manage deployment of this Tetris on EKS cluster. So for application name, I'm going to name it as Tetris. Make sure the name is in lowercase because it does not support uppercase. For project name, I can name this uh, default, choose default. For sync policy, you can either choose manual or automatic, or you can also try to sync here if you want to do it manually. Uh, all the other options are complex. And if you want me to explain this, let me know in the comment section to create a new video but I'm not going to explain you this for now, which can make this video longer. So for now, repository URL is the same that we have used. So I'm going to select the Tetris game.get, which is going to use the main branch of our repo and path is where are your manifest files. So in our repo, the manifest file is in this folder, which is manifest folder. So let us, let's add the name, which is manifest. And the cluster URL is going to be the option that you have here by default, which is kubernetes.default.svc namespace you can choose to use the default namespace or if you have any particular namespace you created you can add that for now i'm going to choose the default namespace and this is all you need let's click on create option this should create an application and automatically deploy our application on the kubernetes cluster just to let you know uh, we don't have any pods and i can show you kubectl get pods as you can see we don't have any pods once we apply it argo cd should automatically fetch the deployment and deploy the application here so I'm going to create it and you will see that an app is, has been created. It is syncing and now progressing. Once it is done, you can see it has been synced and now it has created deployment as well as service. This is also using the commit, which is version one commit. If I click on this, it should open the commit, which is this. So now we are using the first version of Tetris. Once it is created, you can access your application through this service endpoint, which is a load balancer uh, DNS because we are using load balancer as a service type here, as you can see. So we have to wait for some time because load balancer takes like usually two to three minutes. Once it is ready, we can open this in the new tab and we should have our Tetris application deployed, Tetris game deployed on our cluster. Once this is done, we are going to update the image to use the new one and GitOps should automatically sync it and have the new version created. So let's wait for some time. After waiting for some time, you can copy this and paste, you can copy this and paste it in the new tab and we should be able to access our Tetris application. You can see it's here. So let's play. Let's play some Tetris motherfucker. So you can see this is our app. This is our game. Uh, and you can play it if you want. Or let's move ahead with changing the version type. So now I'm going to go ahead and make the change. So this is our first version of the game. If I want to have a new version, which means I need to change the deployment. To deploy a new version of application, I'm going to change the deployment file in the manifest. And rather than using Tetris, version 1 we will be using the tetris v2 after making the change GitOps tool argo cd should automatically det detect it and deploy the new version so let's go and make the change here in the github and rather than using tetris we are going to say v2 let's commit the change by saying version 2 and commit this change once you do this we can come back to argo cd and check all right let's see if the new version has been deployed now that the GitOps is using new commit which says version 2 so i'm going to click on details option here 
and open this endpoint in a new tab. Okay, as you can see, this is the new version of Tetris and this is how GitOps actually syncs your Git repository to detect any changes you have made and automatically deploy it. I hope this video has helped you understand what GitOps is. So there you have it. This is how simple it is to deploy an application using GitOps. And if you have any questions about this, let me know in the comment section. Now here's the challenge. Now here's the challenge. I, I want to deploy the other projects that I have in my YouTube channel using Argo CD. Now that you know how to deploy it. Now, I hope this video was informative. If you have any questions, any doubt, let me know in the comment section. Thank you and have a good day. Bye.